Atlanta Kids online family experience. God has something great in store for you and your family, and we are thankful that you get to experience it together. So keep watching and learning. Only God can hang the stars in outer space Only He can make a rainbow from the rain Only God can part the seas to make a way There's nothing He can't do No, there's nothing He can't do Cause He can do anything, anything at all Too big, no mountain too tall. I know God is powerful. Yeah, anything He can do, anything, anything at all. Only God can hang the stars in outer space. Only He can make a rainbow from the rain. Only God can part the seas to make a way. Trust Him Well, what this means is we can trust Him Yeah, I know This means you and me can trust Him Because He can do anything Anything at all He can do anything Anything at all There's no giant too big too tall I know God is powerful Yeah, anything He can do anything Anything at all Who? Who? You know what time it is Time to hear a story Full of wonder There's so much fun We'll have learning to watching all the construction on our street. Yesterday, we saw an excavator. It looked just like this, but way, way, way taller. See how the arm can go back and forth? It's used to move things from one side of the road to the other. I'm using this to move the pom-poms from this pile over to the bowl. Would you like to play with me? Let's do it. What color should we choose first? Okay. A red one? Here we go. Pink! We did it! Should we choose blue or yellow next? Let's go with blue. Pink! This is so fun! Hoo! Hoo! It's Ollie! Hello, Hayden! Hoo! 
choosing different colors, are you? Oh, hi, Ollie. We're playing this cool game where you get to pick a color of pom-pom and move it to the bowl. It can be fun to choose red or blue. I know someone who had to choose too. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through who? I've got a Bible story for me and you. <gasps> well, hello, friends. Welcome to my cupcake food truck. I'm Aisha. It's so good to see you today. I've been working on making the most amazing treats. Do you want to see them? Ta-da! <laughs> they are my superfood veggie cakes filled with apples, zucchini, and oats. Mmm, mmm, healthy and delicious. I made them special because of today's story. If you're ready for it, on the count of three, yell, tell me a story. One, two, three, tell me a story. Okay, so today's true story from the Bible begins with the king of Babylon who had a very long name. Please welcome King Nebuchadnezzar! Now the king had a training program because he wanted the people working for him to be the very best, and he chose these guys to be in it. He wanted them to study and learn new things. He even wanted them to have all the fancy food and drink right from the king's table. But that was a problem for this guy. This is Daniel. Daniel loved and followed God. Back then, God had rules about what his people could eat. That means Daniel would have to say no to all the fancy food and drink on the king's table. That means Daniel would have to say no to the king. And people didn't usually say no to the king. But guess who had the power to help Daniel make the right choice? Yes, God! God has the power to help all of us make the right choice. And that day, God helped Daniel to make the right choice and follow God's rules. Daniel made the choice to only eat vegetables and drink water. Daniel told the king's servant that he didn't want the king's food. He only wanted to eat vegetables and drink water. No one knew what would happen when the servant told the king Daniel wasn't going to eat his food. But the king said, okay, <laughs> hooray. Wow, God is so powerful. He helped Daniel make the right choice and he wants to help us make the right choice too. Sometimes it can be hard to make the right choice. You can ask God to help you make the right choice and leave your uncle's guitar alone, even though you really want to touch it. You can ask God to help you wait when you really want a cookie before dinner. God can help you be excited for your friend when they get a new bike instead of being sad because you didn't get one. When we ask God to help us, He will. God is so powerful. He can help us make the right choice. Did you like the story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who is powerful? God is powerful. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who is powerful? God is powerful. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. God helped Daniel make the right choice, and God's power can help us make the right choice too. Thanks, Ali. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, God's power helped Daniel. God's power helps us make the right choice too. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! Now it's time to choose the next pom-pom. What color should it be? I'm choosing green. See you next time. Brr, brr, bink!
great is our Lord and mighty in power. Psalm 147, five. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Psalm 147, five. If I were going to go on a treasure hunting adventure, who would be the best person to take along with me? Hmm, this is gonna take some wisdom. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. You know who knows a thing or two about hunting for treasure? Pirates! Arr! Pirates have been hunting for treasure for generations. She'd make the perfect person to bring on my adventure. Arr! I'll find your treasure for ye. X marks the spot. Then again, the only reason pirates buried treasure in the first place is because they stole it from someone else. I'm not sure they can be trusted. Sure we can. A pirate's word is her bond. That's the code of the sea. Arr! Well, hmm. 
when you put it that way. Hey, wasn't your eye patch on your right eye? Oh, uh, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> now, uh, I'm about the treasure. Hmm. I wonder if I should take my Aunt Jeannie on my adventure. Oh, how nice of you to think of me for your little trip. Bless your heart. Oh, I don't know. She may be a little old for treasure hunting. But then again, she was an investigative journalist for Archaeological Digest magazine for 40 years. 42 years, dear. Ooh. You know a thing or two about hunting for treasure, don't you, Aunt Jeannie? I've been around, that's for sure. Well, it seems like a no-brainer. It's obvious who I should take on the treasure hunt. It's... Arr, thank you, thank you, thank you. Was a hard decision, I'm sure. But I'm the star that you've been searching for. In today's story, we'll hear about a king who had a hard decision to make. Follow the advice of his friends or people who are older and wiser. <laughs> it's fun to talk that way. <laughs> I imagine doing it for our whole adventure. Nope. <laughs> I'll see you soon. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 10. For over 40 years, King Solomon ruled over Israel. During that time, he did some pretty amazing things, like building a breathtaking temple for the Lord in a beautiful palace for himself. He received visitors from all over the world. He shared with others the wisdom God had given him. Much of this wisdom can be found in the book of Proverbs, including this advice on how to gain wisdom. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. Unfortunately, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, did not pay attention to his father's words. He believed his way was best. And when Solomon died, Rehoboam became king of Israel. All hail, All hail king, king Rehoboam! Wow, check me out! Golden crown, spiffy palace, this is the life! Though the kingdom was strong under Solomon, he made the people work extremely hard. Now the Israelites wanted to see how this new king would treat them. Led by a man named Jeroboam, they came to see the king. Hey, you stole my name. It's Jeroboam, not Rehoboam. <laughs> Whatevs, Jer. Now what do you want? Your father made us work very hard. Let us take more breaks and we'll serve you well. Sounds like you want to slack off. We just need a little more vacay time. Then we'll be ready to give it all we got. Uh, well, come back in three days, Jer. Jeroboam and the Israelites left. Rehoboam paced the floor, trying to come up with a good answer. Yeah, no, maybe? Many times when Solomon needed wisdom, he asked God for it. Rehoboam didn't bother to talk to God, but he did at least talk to his father's wise advisors. The people want me to give them a break so they don't have to work so hard. What do you say? Be kind to them. Absolutely. Give them what they're asking for. You'll win their loyalty that way. Then they will serve you well. Huh. Instead of taking the advice of these wise men, Rehoboam decided to ask his buddies, the guys he had grown up with. He found them eating honey cakes and debating racing chariots. Gotta go with gold rims is what I say. Nah, gold is all show. You have to add some diamonds for traction. Hey guys. Yo. What is up, my man? People want me to give them a break so they don't have to work so hard. What do you say? Oh, this is good. You get to do the real king stuff now. You gotta show them who's boss. Uh, they think your dad was tough? Tell them my pinky finger's stronger than my daddy's legs. <laughs> yeah, and, and my dad gave you a heavy load but you haven't seen nothing yet. I am gonna lay it on you. <laughs> Rehoboam frowned. He thought hard for two whole seconds. 
Whoa, you guys are good. I'm totally doing that. After three days, Jeroboam and the Israelites with him returned. Hey, Jer. Your Majesty, will you lighten the heavy workload your father gave us? <laughs> my pinky finger is stronger than my father's legs. My father put a heavy load on your shoulders, but I'll make it even heavier. My father punished stragglers. I'll double it up. Rehoboam finished with a flourish. He waited for people to tremble and bow low. Are you kidding me? Jeroboam turned to the Israelites. We don't want anything to do with this joker or the rest of David's family. Let's go back to our homes and start our own kingdom. Yeah! Hey, hey, wait. No, no, you can't do that. I'm in charge. Yeah, you're in charge of yourself. Good luck with that. Jeroboam and the men with him marched out and returned to their homes. From that day, the nation was split into two kingdoms. Rehoboam still ruled in Judah, but Jeroboam was made king of Israel. Totally not my fault. Rehoboam failed to listen to his father's own words. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. Rehoboam's foolishness nearly cost him all of the kingdom. King Rehoboam made the wrong choice. He should have remembered what his father, King Solomon, wrote. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. That means if you want to become wise, you should find someone who's wiser than you to spend time with. Jesus' disciples spent three years hanging out with him, listening to him teach, watching the wise way he lived. We should find someone to learn from too. Maybe someone older and wiser. Oh, thank you, dear. Because when you surround yourself with foolish people, arr, you'll end up doing something foolish. Arr. You surround yourself with people who say mean things about others, you're going to say mean things about others. With angry people, you'll be angry. With people who break the rules, yep, you know what's gonna happen. But hey, you've been around, right? You know the difference between someone who makes wise decisions and someone who doesn't. So, Pick your friends carefully and find someone older and wiser to be your mentor, someone you can learn from. Here's the one thing to remember today. Hang out with wise people. Ask God to help you find the wise people in your life. He wants you to have wisdom, remember, and he can use other people to help show you the way. So, what do you say, Aunt Jeannie? You wanna go on an adventure with me? Haley, my dear. I was made for adventure. Well, all right. <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye from me too. What are you doing? Uh, oh, uh, I, uh, uh, I am looking, uh, I'm looking for, uh, ow! Oh, I, I'm looking for, ow! Oh, something, I, oh! I got it! Ah! Whoo! Whoo! Hey! Huh. It really is hard to find hay in a needle stack. <laughs> Congratulations! Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ow! 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 Oh, okay, first we uh, shake under the desk. Yeah, right there. Then we elbows. All right. Woo! Hello, everybody. I'm John. Oh. And I'm Brandon. And you're watching The So-and-So Show. And our very secretive, extremely official, super professional, so and so show handshake. Oh, so and so show handshake. Uh, 
So and so show, oh, handshake, oh, still can't high five, huh? Pal? No, I never learned how growing up, and it just didn't seem like something I would ever need to know. Oh, bummer. Well, I do know someone you need to know. Who's that? Someone who knows stuff. Ooh. Hey! Hi. Wow. Hello, come on in, have a seat. Oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, so uh, tell us who you are and what you know. I'm Prospector Sale, and I know all kinds of things, but my favorite things I know are all to do with prospecting. Oh, uh, what's prospecting? What's prospecting? Yeah. You don't know? Uh. Well, it's only the best dream job man ever did dream up. Huh. It's panning for gold. Oh, that's very cool. Oh, cool. Uh, have you always wanted to be a prospector? Oh, well, ever since I was 10 years old. Before that, I didn't think I could become a prospector. The only ones I ever seen were old men with long beards. I'm not old. I'm not a man. I don't have a beard. No. So, so what did you do? Well, one day I decided that none of that stuff really mattered. I could pan for gold without a beard. <laughs> all I really needed was something I had all along. What are you, your gold mining pants? Nope. A human brain. Oh. All the hardest work's done right up there. <laughs> pants only do the catching. Oh. That's easy. Oh. Can you show us how to pan oh, for gold? Yeah. Oh, you've got brains, don't you? <laughs> Last I checked. Great. Let's go. Yeehaw. Uh, don't we need a river or stream with lots of sediment to pan for gold? Well, usually, but you don't have a stream nearby, so we'll take what we can get. <laughs> Roger that. Now, this bag of cereal is supposed to contain a prize. Oh. So let's see if you boys can find it. Just do what I do. My pan's empty. Yeah, you may have panned a little too fast. Oh. <laughs> Here, try like this. Just a little slower. Okay. Yeah. I don't think this is working. Yeah. You may be being a little too gentle. Oh, okay. It, it, it's just cereal. <laughs> don't be afraid to let it spill out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. One more. You got it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh look at that. I got it! Aww. Nice work, Brandon! I wanted it. Let's try another one. Oh, are we actually looking for gold this time? Yep. <laughs> but mind the worms. You yeah, what? Just teasing. Oh. Ain't no real worms in there. <laughs> but when you're looking for gold, sometimes there are distractions in the dirt. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Hey! <laughs> I found a gummy worm! <laughs> My favorite! Uh -oh. oh! Oh, this is dirty! Yeah, and distracted! Get searching! Hey, I found it! Oh, oh, oh I did too! Now, I did too. that I do recommend eating. Oh, All okay. right. Mm. Without the wrapper. Uh huh. Mmm, yeah, that's so good. Thank you, Prospector Sal. That was fun. And delicious, except for the dirt. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Hope to see you boys out on the river sometime. Oh, yeah, well, sure thing. You can keep the pans. Hey! Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye now. All right. Hey, I feel like I learned something. Hey, you want to learn more? Of course. Good, it's Bible Story Time with Kellen. Woo! Hey guys. Hey Kellen. Y'all ready for some Bible story action? You bet. Great. Today we're talking about a man named Rehoboam. He was the son of King Solomon and the grandson of King David. When Solomon died, it was Rehoboam's time to step up to the throne and become king of all Israel. So to help tell the story, here's Human Head Puppet Theater. Yeah. Ah, yes, I am Rehoboam, son of Solomon. Don't you just love me? Ah, <laughs> yeah, you do. Of course you do. I'm going to be king. <laughs> Look at my grand.
Rehoboam went to the city of Shechem, where all the Israelites were gathered to make him king. They chose a man named Jeroboam to speak for them. King Rehoboam! Yeah, Jeroboam! All of us Israelites were talking, and we wanted to say to you... That you love my new robes? Whoa! What? No. Oh, oh, that you want me to uh, pass a strict Fridays off a sweatpants dress code, huh? <laughs> what? Actually, that sounds really nice, but yeah. no. Oh, well, spit it out. <sighs> All right. Your father made our lives hard. Right? He put heavy loads on us. Give us a break. Lighten up on us and, and we will serve you. Hmm. All right, give me three days to think about it. I didn't come back here, all right? Right. Okay, I'll think about it, I'll think about it. King Rehoboam talked it over with the elders who had served and advised his father, King Solomon. Uh, so uh, what advice can you give me? <laughs> How should I answer these people? Be kind to them. Please them. Give them what they are asking for. They will always serve you. Huh, yeah, sounds kind of boring <laughs> and wimpy, but I, I'll think about it. I'm not really going to think about it. I just don't want my elders to feel so quickly rejected. <laughs> I'm literally right here. Oh, yeah, you got some new advice? Yes. Maybe don't whisper about someone when they're in the room with you. Oh, now that is good advice. Can you believe this guy? <laughs> then Rehoboam asked instead for the advice of the young men he had grown up with and who served him now. Hey! hey! Hello, my friend! Hey, secret handshake! Oh, yeah! Oh, 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 Ah, uh, really? Uh, it's, all right. it's all right. Just go ahead and tell the story. Oh, right. Yeah. Dude, what's going on, my friend? Hey, I want to hear your advice. Really? Yeah. Um, right. What should I say to these people who asked me to lighten the load that my father put on them? Oh, dude. Yeah. They are crazy for asking you that. You oh. should tell them my little finger is stronger than my father's legs. My little finger, huh? Yeah, yeah. These fingers of mine are quite little. <laughs> so that is saying a lot. Yeah, <laughs> Go yeah. on. Yeah, if you, you you tell him, if you think my father was harsh, you hadn't seen the half of it. Now I'm gonna be way more harsh than he was. Hmm. That sounds nice. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> High five. Yeah. Come on. The people showed up three days later just as Rehoboam had told them. And I bet you can guess whose advice he decided to listen to. Okay. I do think uh, life under my father was hard. You haven't seen the half of it. I'll make all your heavy loads even heavier, huh? I'll be way more harsh than my father was. <laughs> Get lost, son of David. We don't have any share in your family line. We're going home. You can mind your own business and take care of yourself. Wait, 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 where are you going? Was it something I said? I, I, come look at how small my fingers are. It's, the, it's not that heavy. My little pinky. I just... Oh. So the Israelites went home. And because of Rehoboam's decision, the nation of Israel was split into two. Rehoboam only ruled over the Israelites who lived in the towns of Judah. The rest of Israel refused to be ruled by the royal family of David. The end. The end? Seriously? Yeah, seriously. He really should have picked the other advice. <laughs> it's true. His choice had huge consequences that affected generations of people. You know, it's a good reminder that our choices don't just affect us. Absolutely. And listening to wisdom is a huge help when making our choices. It's like what Rehoboam's father, Solomon, wrote in the book of Proverbs. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. Now that's some great advice. Yeah, thanks, Kellen. You're welcome. I'll see you next time. If Rehoboam 
had listened to the wise counselors, his whole life and the history of Israel could have been different. Yeah, I, it's important to know who to listen to. I mean, those young guys were pretty confident in their opinion, but they weren't actually wise. True, I like where you're going with this. Yeah. So, uh, reveal the question. Who is the wisest person you know? Yeah, really think about it. It's helpful to know who is wise, so we know who to learn from and who to go to for help. Might be a parent or a teacher or maybe a friend or a grandparent. We all have wise people in our lives. So talk it out together and we'll see you next time. I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this is the So and So Show. Here we go. Here we High go. five. Here we go. Oh, come on. High five. Yeah. Where's your hands? Bye-bye! Oh, hey! Oh, oh, wow, you oh, punched me in the face. I'm sorry, How did you I'm, not? I'm trying to hit your You hair. hit my face. Seven, all right. Bye-bye! All right. I'm getting close. High five. Oh, hit. Ah! Yeah! We're two best friends. <laughs> How did God show us his love? That's right, he sent Jesus. Jesus came to be born, live a perfect life, and then sacrifice that life on a cross so we could be forgiven of our sins. And what is sin? Correct! Sin is anything we think, say, or do that makes God sad, and it separates us from him. God didn't want to stay separated from us though. That's why Jesus died on the cross. If you have never asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, you're gonna have the opportunity right now. Just bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I put my faith in you. I put my trust in you. And I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we know there's a party going on in heaven. And now it's time for small groups. In the links below, we have some amazing resources, including Manikid's Facebook group and Instagram that will allow you and your family to learn more about God together all week long. Okay, I'll see you next week.